Hey everybody, I'm so glad that you guys have tuned in and so many of you said you were going to tune in to this little episode from the North Carolina Zoo. For those of you that were sharing that you were going to, thank you so much. For those of you guys who found us, we're so happy you did. And how nice was it to start with a beautiful shot of Cyprus, our American alligator. He's juvenile, still young maybe three years old. We're not exactly sure. He came to us through the state due to some unforeseen circumstances. But we're very happy to have him as one of our animal ambassadors here at the North Carolina Zoo. Our animal ambassadors go out and tell stories, share with people. And at these remarkable times, he's going to do it digitally with you guys, some of you staying home. And I'm glad you are. We at North Carolina Zoo are continuing to take amazing care of our animals. And we are also practicing our social distancing. The camera can come in and out. But our camera folks are staying at a distance away. American alligators. Again, this is a juvenile. And because so many of us are staying home right now, I'm going to talk to you about amazing moms. And it's got to be moms, guys. Sorry. Because the story is all about moms this time. But mom alligators are incredible moms. They dig a nest, kind of a little wallow. They lay the eggs in, and then they cover it with sticks and mud, twigs and leaves, and sometimes even poop. And as it begins to decay or rot, it warms up. And that warming is what's kind of incubating the eggs, keeping the eggs nice and warm. When the eggs are getting ready to hatch, they'll begin to make a sound, a little call, sometimes almost like a chirp. Believe it or not, Cypress, even at this age, was chirping a second ago. He may or may not, we'll see. Then mom comes back and she can help dig out the eggs if needed. If babies are having a tough time hatching out of their eggs, mom will even take that egg into her mouth. But she rolls it around gently in her mouth with her tongue and she helps the babies hatch. Thanks, mom, that's great. Once everybody's out and hatched, the baby alligators go down to the water. That's where the food is. Believe it or not, when they hatch, they can hunt. Now they're not taking big prey, but they can take tadpoles and small frogs maybe small fish, those small prey items, because they are carnivores. Uh-oh, science. Dun-dun-dun-dun-dun. Carnivores. All right, what is carnivore? What is that? What are they eating? Are they plant eaters? Are they eating both plants and animals? Or are they meat eaters exclusively? Got a couple hands up over there. We have a lot of questions coming from the audience about why his mouth might be open. Why is his mouth open? I think he's just kind of chilling out. He's kind of relaxing. Um, our, our adults here a minute ago were bellowing back and forth. So he might be kind of open. Kind of, I'm not really sure what that noise is. So let me kind of show this off a little bit just in case. So why is his mouth open? Not 100% sure. Usually it's closed, but he'll open it from time to time. Have you guys seen those teeth? That might have been a giveaway for the question I was asking a second ago about carnivores. Yeah, he's a meat eater. Oh, I think the mosquitoes are out. <laughs> he's a meat eater. So mom takes him down to the water where they can hunt. So thanks mom, take us where the food is. <gasps> Danger comes by. A predator, a, 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 a raccoon or a bird, another alligator. Then the babies, they can hang out on mom's head. They can hang out on mom's back. Shoot, sometimes they might even swim into mom's mouth to protect themselves. So mom will protect them. There's that sound. There's that sound again. How cool is that? Where are you going, Cypress? Where are you going? You're like, I'm going over there. What do you think, Cypress? Yep. 
I have no idea. Anybody that speak Gator? I don't know. I don't speak Gator. We're talking about you and babies. So it's amazing how good of moms these guys are. We'll go up here and show you another thing, but we'll tell you a little bit more about baby gators. The only big problem is that moms are going to come back and lay 30 more eggs next season or a year later. And by then, unfortunately, some of the first clutch, um, they're more like food to mom. So mom may eat one of her babies, but imagine what that does. All the other alligators, I am out of here. Mom's tripping. She's eating us now. She took such good care of us, but now she's eating some of us? What's wrong with this? I don't know, moms, but it works for alligators. They do disperse pretty quick. So, not that I'm condoning any kind of behavior, <laughs> but that's kind of an amazing thing. Mom by alligators, so good. Such amazing animals. Another really neat thing about alligators and, and their babies the, the hatchlings, their sex is based on temperature of the eggs, of the nest, I'm sorry. It's kind of like cool guys and, nope, cool dudes, cool, cool girls and hot guys. So cool girls and hot guys. So the temperature, if it's warm, you're going to have mostly males being born. If it's cooler, let's say 86 degrees in the nest or cooler, you're gonna have females being born. In the middle there, you'll get a mix of offspring, mix of sexes. So males 93 and up a little bit, females 86-ish and down. In the middle, between 86 and 93, you'll get a mix of the sexes. You get some really amazing shots there of this really cool animal. Again, this is Cypress. He's pushing three years old. I do want to show one thing because on the on the baby, and then I'll talk about the big, the big ones are back here. Wendy, can you show them those little sensors around the mouth? Those are touch sensors, so they're able to sense vibration in the water really, really well with all of those sensors. How cool is that? Hey, uh, Nico. We heard you guys were interested in alligators. We wanted to make sure that you're out there watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate your time. How amazing is that? Let me give Cypress a little break. Good job, Cypress. I'll come back here and tell you about some of the adults, the adult guys that are back here, and some of the neat things that are going on here at the... Here at the North Carolina Zoo. Here we go. Get Cypress back in his box. You got a hand up over here. What we got? We did have a, a few questions about why you were able to handle Cypress oh. and why he was so still in your hands. Fantastic questions. Well, when we got Cypress, as you might imagine, um, it took some time. We did handle him a lot. We wanted to kind of desensitize him to being handled and that it was okay. It wasn't dangerous. Um, to be handled, that you weren't in, he wasn't in, make him feel comfortable that he wasn't in danger. So it's a lot of practice. The animal keepers here at the North Carolina Zoo and the animal ambassador section at Kid Zone um, took a lot of time in handling and sharing. A lot of the educators here um, were also taking part in that. Um, and it, it's kind of a team effort, but that took some practice and some time. And there's a lot of trust that's being built, a lot of bond building in that way. So we handle you some, and then you get a treat. You get, a, you get some sort of reinforcer to say, this was okay, and you're okay with this. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, mosquito. <laughs> I told you they're around. Um, first up for you guys, uh, we do want to do a little shout out to Beth as well. Beth is on the other side of this screen. Um, she is actually in Burlington, I believe, or someplace else. So she's responding to some of your questions. So this time of social distancing, we've got work going on here, Wendy, and we have Chelsea and Debbie here as well, kind of helping us with questions. Um, and then Beth responding uh, online to some of your uh, inquiries at all, which is kind of cool. So behind me, can you guys see these guys? Uh, it, you know, of course, right? You, when you're working with animals and you're working with, with, with people, sometimes they just don't do what they're supposed to do. On the left-hand side, as you're looking at the screen, that log back there, that kind of grayish log, yeah, that's a male. That's our big male. 
He's over 40 years old. He weighs, take, can you even imagine, can you take a guess? What do you think he might weigh? 460 pounds. He's a big boy. And off to the right was a female over here. She's in her mid-twenties. She's only about 150 pounds, 175 pounds. But let's put this in perspective. So how big is he? How big is this large male? That's how big he is. He is an immense guy. Look at that. That's what his skull might look like. Ways to tell difference between a crocodile and an alligator using this skull. It's kind of easy to do with using this skull. If it's an alligator, he'll see you later. If it's a crocodile, he'll see you in a while. No? All right. Let's go science. <laughs> Alligators, the fourth tooth on the bottom jaw is hidden. So let's see here. We open this up. One, two, three. The fourth tooth on the bottom jaw is hidden. And there's actually a little socket. There's a little socket that that tooth goes into in an alligator's skull. So that's one way to tell the difference. And it's both sides. You can kind of see, I'll open it up so you can see. <clears throat> the fourth tooth goes into those sockets that are being pointed out. And they just disappear. They just go up into the socket when I close my mouth if I'm an alligator. The other thing about them, alligator snouts, a little bit more U-shaped, a little bit rounder down there than the crocodile. So that fourth tooth is hidden and a little more U-shaped in general. In the United States, you're going to see almost always alligators. We have a really neat story about kind of what happened with alligators a while back. So that's alligator. I'll point out a crocodile real quick and I'll come back to the gator so you can see the difference. Oh, cord fell down. I'm gonna put these side by side. Wendy, are you, your amazing skills able to show the difference here? So a little bit more U-shaped, a little bit more V, or a little bit more angled on the crocodile. Alligator, more U-shaped, crocodile, a little more V-shaped. And then that fourth tooth is on the outside of the crocodile's jaw. That's the fourth tooth on the outside. Here, that fourth tooth is inside that little socket we saw. So a pretty good easy way, easy way to tell the difference. Do not get too close, however. The best way to do is just kind of go, okay, I know the difference and we're good. A couple cool adaptations. Eyes on top of the head nose on top of the head. Do me a favor. Tilt your head back as far as you can. Keep your shoulder still. Tilt your head back as far as you can. And now you become an alligator. Your eyes are on top of your head, so is your nose. Problem is, so is your mouth. You're going to have a trouble in a rainstorm because you have all this water coming down. These guys are built nose on top, eyes on top, mouth kind of on the side. Not truly, but you kind of get the idea there. So they can able to, able to open their mouth very well built for life in the water. So if the water line is here, as I'm swimming through the water, I can just have my eyes up or just have my nose up, take a breath, look around and see what's going on and sneak up on prey. So we mentioned earlier, they're carnivores, they're meat eaters. So if they're able to have that camouflage looking like a log and being able to submerge themselves very well in the water, really well built for life in the swamps and waters in the Southeast United States from North Carolina, Southern North Carolina, all the way over to Texas and up in Arkansas. Got a question. We have a lot of questions about how many teeth they have in their mouth. How many teeth? Do you think I'm going in there to count them? <laughs> They've got between 75 and 80 in their mouth at a time. The really cool thing is like another really amazing animal, the shark. 
these guys lose their teeth regularly. As a hunter, as these amazing top apex predators, apex top of the line predators, they'll lose their teeth. So you and I, we get two sets of teeth in our lifetime, unless we buy a set when we're a little bit older. We get two sets of teeth. We get our baby teeth, our deciduous teeth, the ones that fall out, and we have our adult teeth. These guys, their teeth are replaced all the time, constantly. So they may get two, three thousand teeth in a lifetime, where you and I are pushing 60. Great question. Yeah. Why do babies look so much different than the adults? Wow. Who had that? That was really cool. Great observation. We have a little thing to show that. And no, this was not staged. <laughs> so, mom alligator, baby alligators. We use this on some of our investigation stations here at the zoo. Mom, more of a consistent color, and you might have seen that on the adults that were behind us as well. And you saw cypress, and these babies have these stripes. Any guesses? If they look so different, and it's the little ones that have the stripes, why do you think they might be striped? Did you think camouflage? To hide in the, in the, in the waters? Maybe the sun is hitting it, so they kind of have that little bit of a look to them? And that's exactly right. Maybe they can get in, the, get in the weeds and hang out there to help protect them. But once they get about six feet long, they really don't have any predators, any natural predators anyway, any predators in their natural homes. But to get there, they have to have these, that little pattern. And they'll begin to lose it. You saw Cypress, and Cypress was um, about three years old, we think again, um, and he has, still has some stripes. As they get bigger and bigger and bigger, they lose those patterns. Because they don't need them. They just don't need to be camouflaged anymore. When they get to be six feet long, not a whole lot messing with them out in the wild, out in their natural homes. Great question and wonderful observation, guys. Oh, we should show you this, because I brought it. Oh, now I'm going to make noise. <laughs> That's how educators are, right? Every time something new is happening, I make a noise. This is an alligator egg. How cool is that? It's kind of leathery when it's, when it's um, in the egg, in the nest, I'm sorry. Kind of leathery to the touch, kind of rough to the touch. Kind of has a little bit of a bumpy feel. It's not quite as hard as a chicken egg. As far as when you touch it, it kind of has a little bit more give to it. But other than that, it kind of looks like a chicken egg. A little long and skinny. And there might be 30 of those in any given nest. Yeah. We have a lot of questions about how our alligators here on Habitat are fed, what oh. we feed them, and sure. how often they eat. I love it. Right now, they don't eat anything. Let's say it again. They don't eat anything right now for months in the wintertime. They go into, go into a kind of a phase of torpor, kind of a, a resting period for them. So they don't eat anything. Not just our gators here at the zoo. In the wild, they're not eating anything there either. They're ectotherms. Fancy science word. Ectotherm. Does that mean that they're, that they're cold-blooded or warm-blooded? You and I are endotherms. These are ectotherms. They're cold-blooded. Now, it doesn't mean their blood is cold. It means that their body temperature is essentially with the, what's around them. They rely on their environment for their body temperature. You and I, we, we maintain our temperature internally. These guys externally, outside factors make a difference. In the winter, it's cold. They're not producing a whole lot of energy. They want to relax. They want to kind of just be for a while. So they're not eating a whole lot. However, in the summertime, these guys are eating a lot. They're getting rodents, rats, mice, things like that. Um, they're going to get some chicken which is kind of, you know, one of those that helps them. With all They're going to get some fish as well here at the North Carolina Zoo. But right now, nothing. Now, that's going to change shortly. That'll change shortly. Their keepers are telling us, yep, as it gets warmer, they're going to be eating a little bit more food over time. And I should tell you, I think this is amazing. These guys are trained. We do some amazing work here at the North Carolina Zoo with a lot of our animals in the way that we work with them so they can participate kind of in their, almost in their own health care and to be safe when we're in there working with them. Safe for the animals and safe for the keepers. These guys, by the way, are, they're target trained. 
we can have a target pole or a target on the end of a stick to kind of that helps us to separate them they know where to go to get fed so we don't have two alligators really close to each other which could be a problem they might fight over the food or the keepers might have a tough time making sure that everybody gets as much food that they're supposed to get using that target they can also go onto a scale they're scale trained to get weights which is really important you want to know where your animals are are they healthy so weighing them was a really good way to find that out and get this the big male over here on the left they can do voluntary blood draws from his tail. Right? Right? They can get blood from him without putting him under anesthesia, without putting him under some sort of sedation. So if they need to do an exam, they want to see what's going on, if everything's okay, they can do that, and it's all voluntary. He is right there. He knows what's going on. He does it and gets that amazing reward. What would a reward be for some of you guys? You guys are again getting chicken or fish maybe or a rat. Would that be a reward for you? Yes, that's what I want. Chelsea's shaking her head vigorously. No, I don't want that. I don't want a rat. Maybe pizza or Snickers bar. What about you, Chelsea? What do you got back? What would, what would be a good reward for you? Pasta. Yeah. Pa I'm sorry. Chelsea says pasta. Really cool. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you all are looking for more of this, a lot of zoos are stepping up. A lot of museums are stepping up. A lot of aquariums stepping up. Because these are remarkable times, aren't they? Some of us are, are inside, hanging out there. It's awesome to be able to bring you Cypress and the other animals here at the North Carolina Zoo. We'll be doing this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 o'clock to share these with you. By the way, here at the North, here, here, we have four total alligators. We're not even at the other space. We have a, two others, two other females that are about the same size as the female that's here. And for those of you that weren't here earlier, this is Cypress. Thought we'd show him to you one more time. He's gonna open his mouth and show you those teeth, helping him be that carnivore. I don't know if he'll blink. He has a nictitating membrane. Love these fancy science words. Kind of like a third eyelid. It'll flash over his eye from time to time. And he does that to protect his eye when he's swimming, going through brush, or attacking a prey item. At this size, it may not be a big of a deal, but when you're the size of those guys back there in the wild, in their natural homes, they might be taking some large food items, so it's good to be able to protect your eyes as much as you can. You can imagine him swimming through the water, those eyes on top of his head, nose on top of his head. Helping him breathe. That amazing pattern. Those of you that are tuning in now. Oh, oh. Anybody speak alligator out there again? He's saying hi to us or something. <laughs> that amazing pattern. Help, help the young juvenile, the young alligators, the juveniles camouflage in their homes. This is an amazing story. It's hard to almost think of this. But like in the 50s, we almost lost American alligators in the United States. They almost went extinct. They were one of the first group of, group of animals that was classified as endangered species even before the Endangered Species Act was put in place. They were on an endangered species list in 1967. For a lot of reasons, but they were being harvested so hard. People wanted the skin, wanted the hide, wanted the meat. So they were being hunted really hard. But the cool thing, people went, you know what? We recognize that's happening. So let's put controls in place. Let's monitor the hunting of these guys. Let's create farms and places for the animals to be. The numbers were possibly as low as 15,000. That's a little less than the population of Asheboro, North Carolina, where the zoo is. The numbers went from 15,000, they were put on the endangered species list before the endangered species list truly existed in, 19, in the 1960s. But with all those precautions in place, everybody realizing that we have to do something to help. We as citizens of, of the United States, we as people who cherish these animals, we need to do something. And by listing them, putting those 
precautions in place, they were able to be delisted, taken off the endangered species list about 20 years later in the mid-1980s. Today, when their population was once night with around 15,000, it's believed to be 800,000 to a million animals in the United States. Amazing recovery story. And it shows what we do, what we can do when we go, you know what? That's an animal worth saving. And sure, we were saving it because we may want to have, we, want, we do save it and harvest it for food. There are hides that we can use. But still, now they're in the wild. They're out there in their natural homes at really high numbers. And we've done a great job protecting an animal like this. The American alligator, and this is Cyprus, coming out for a quick visit. In this time of COVID-19 social distancing. We have a question. We have a lot of questions about the shape of their eye and their pupil. Shape of their eye and their pupil? You're looking at it's kind of slit there? <laughs> well, you tell them, Cypress. I'm done. I'm done talking. You say it. No? All right. That's just alligator nests. Um, right now, um, they, they are nocturnal. They will come out at night a lot of times. Um, and when they do that, that eye will open up, that pupil will open up really wide. And there's a neat membrane in the back of their eye called a tapetum, a tapetum. And that, you can't see it from here, but you can at least see the eye. That tapetum almost acts like a mirror. So in the nocturnal times, when it's dark outside, nocturnal meaning night, that tapetum or that mirror-like level, that, that mirror-like membrane in the back of the eye reflects whatever light is available, letting them see better. But the pupil, there, did you see his eye, did his, his eye blink? I don't know if you could see that or not. The eye on my side blinked. I don't know if the eye on your side did or not. Um, but the pupil will grow, and they'll be able to collect as much light as possible out there. And alligators are really well known for their eye shine at night. Because of that tapetum, their eye shine at night looks really, really red. Sometimes you can see that. Unfortunately, we can't show that to you here. But their tapetum, the eye shine of an American alligator, is very, very red at night when the light shines on it and the pupil is that much more widely open. You guys are making some really good observations out there on an alligator in hand and the ones behind me, too. Great job, guys. Oh, Cypress says so, too. I have one more thing I want to share with you about alligators because it's kind of important. Reason that they were protected, reason, another reason that's really important to have them is they're called a keystone species. They're a keystone species. They are key in their habitats, in their home habitats for survival. They make these gator wallows, kind of like a gator hole. They wallow in the water. They wallow, make a mud, make a mud puddle, make more of those out there providing spaces for other animals to go and enjoy the water. But because they're creating those gator holes, those gator wallows, other animals can use them, and taking alligators out of an ecosystem, out of a habitat home, can prove detrimental to the entire ecosystem. So having these guys being able to go in and create those, going through the swamps and marshes, make sure that there's open spaces, alligators play a vital role in the ecosystems that they call home Again, from, north, from southern North Carolina all the way through Texas and even up into Arkansas and places. Finding, again, well over 800,000, maybe a million of these amazing animals out and about. That's awesome. Well, we hope you guys have enjoyed tuning in and learning about Cyprus learning about. Somebody's pointing at my gators. Oh, he moved, turned around. <laughs> that figures. We, hope you've, we definitely hope you've learned about this. And I know it's challenging times out there for some of us, but keep up the good work, guys. We truly hope you tuned in to, to the North Carolina Zoo today. If this is interesting to you, we'll be back Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 10 o'clock. You'll see other, being, other segments being shared throughout the days as well. And so many other zoos, aquariums, museums, um, history places, parks are helping out and sharing content with you as well. Take advantage of many of those as you can. 
Continue asking some questions. We'll be happy to answer them. We'll be wrapping this one up. Um, we'll get those questions answered as soon as we can. And again, from the North Carolina Zoo and Cypress, the American alligator, thank you very much, and we'll see you again soon. Be safe.